Okay, today we're talking about the flight planner. I'm just gonna cover where everything comes from, kind of get you an idea of how to fill one of these out so you can be uh, prepared when you go to your next flight. We're gonna start by putting out our waypoints. We're gonna start at Payne Field. We're gonna climb up to 3,000 feet and then to some visual release point before we start our maneuver phase. We're gonna re select a re-entry point and then descend down to pattern altitude and then go home. Okay, in this case, we're using Duval. So I've made a uh, plan from Payne down to Duval, just a single line. Uh, and then uh, I actually started at the VOR for simplicity. All right, next, our true course is gonna come from this line in the sand. We're gonna use our plotter and our uh, chart, align our zero and 180 uh, to get us a course. In this case, we got 135. Our altitude, uh, we're departing at 607. That's the field elevation. We're climbing up to 3,000 feet. Our predicted wind's gonna come from our weather briefing, uh, 350, nine gusts into 16, and I took half the gust factor. Uh, at altitude, 015 at six. Field elevation and the temperature aloft. Our planned true airspeed, this is gonna be our uh, true airspeed, and remember that indicated airspeed is what you read off the airspeed indicator. Calibrated is uh, adjusted for our installation error based on our pitot tube. Uh, we're gonna convert that to knots if you're not already in knots. And then we're going to use our temperature and pressure to determine our uh, true airspeed using the E6B. Go from calibrated on the inner scale to true airspeed on the outer scale. Then we're going to use the E6B to determine our wind correction angle. Uh, first, we're going to select our wind, 015 at 6 knots, and then turn to our true course, 135. And our true airspeed, 96 knots in this case. Remember the pencil mark is for the wind and the grommet's gonna give us our ground speed. And this is also gonna, also gonna give us our wind correction angle. Uh, remember that your airplane is here, here in the center and the wind is pushing us from left to right and accelerating us. So we're gonna have a greater ground speed than airspeed and we're gonna have a left wind correction angle. So minus three degrees. Then we're gonna take into account the difference between true and magnetic north minus 16 in our case, and then any deviation, anything inside the aircraft that's messing with your compass. And that's gonna be our compass heading. We can use the rate of climb to determine the amount of time we'll be flying and the distance we'll be covering because we've got a time and ground speed. Uh, and then our distance to climb will give us the remaining distance between our top of climb to our destination. And with a ground speed and a distance, we can get our time using our time, we can also get our fuel burn. Don't forget to add some extra fuel for taxi and takeoff. Uh, and then uh, for cruise, your cruise uh, fuel burn is going to be slightly different from your climb fuel burn. We're going to use the VOR to get our VOR bear our, yeah, bearing from the VOR. In this case, that's why I like to start from the VOR out to our point. Don't forget to include your frequency and uh, the identification of the VOR station. On our way back, uh, our re-entry point, actually let's back up. For the maneuver phase, I like to allot, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes at full power. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be 4.85 gallons for our maneuver phase. On our way back, well, we're just gonna go in the opposite direction, 315 on the way back. Uh, our bearing two will be 180 degrees away from the bearing from, and don't forget to change it to a two indication. Wind, temperature, velocity, all the same, uh, basically functions the same way as our departure. Uh, we get our wind correction angle, use our magnetic variation or our isogonic line from our chart to determine the uh, magnetic variation and then get a compass heading. Now, in this case, we're gonna use our time from top of, uh, from our cruise down to our descent. Uh, that's gonna be the amount of time we'll be descending. And then we can work backwards uh, using that distance to get our distance from our uh, re-entry point. Uh, given our time and velocity, we've, now we've got uh, a fuel burn and uh, we can tally up our fuel burn. Don't forget to add 30 minutes for cruise for VFR, 45 minutes at night. And then of course your personal mins. Here I like to include radio frequencies uh, on the back. You can do your weight and balance calculations. Uh, it's got a nice little checklist here. Anyways, I hope this helps. Uh, real quick and dirty. We're not trying to you know, make this super polished. It's just enough to get you uh, a good idea of what to do. Uh, for this flight planner. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, if you're flying with me today, do this before we get here to the field so we can uh, go out to the aircraft sooner rather than later. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.